Hi, it's Lindsay here from High Voltage Leadership. I have a really important topic that I wanted to discuss with you today. But before I do that, I want to do an acknowledgement in the spirit of reconciliation. And that is that I live and work on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And that includes the Siksika, the Kainai, and the Bikani Nations, the Tutsina, and the Stony Dakota Nation, as well as Métis Nation, uh, Region Number 3, and all the people who have made their homes here on what is Treaty 7 in southern Alberta. And I feel like it's so important uh, to acknowledge that those people have lived here um, essentially for a millennia. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is the triumphs and the incredible tragedies that have been a part of our Indigenous uh, neighbors' experience just over the last few weeks. Starting with, of course, the Indian residential schools and the discovery of so many hundreds of unmarked graves of children, uh, who have been found uh, very recently, and more will continue to be found. And these children were forcibly removed from their homes uh, when they were very small. Um, they were taken to these Indian residential schools um, that were set up by the government and the churches, and they were starved and beaten and raped and horribly, horribly mistreated. And there is intergenerational trauma that has come from these incredibly terrible experiences um, and it has decimated their beautiful cultures and languages. And as a result um, the, you know, of this catastrophe, we have all been a witness to the incredible deep sorrow. And we have been astonished and horrified to think that this has happened here in our country, in our backyards, in the places that we live and work and love, um, and that it was happening and we didn't know it. It wasn't a part of our common and shared history. So not only is it horrific that these children died under such incredibly terrible circumstances, but that we didn't know, we weren't informed, and we have only just now started to share uh, the sorrow. But there have also been a couple incredible triumphs that have come out, even just in the last few days. And the first one of course, is the appointment of Mary Simon as our Governor General of Canada, the Queen's representative here in Canada and to our government. And Mary has been a tireless advocate uh, for Aboriginal rights, and she has been an incredible negotiator for her Inuit um, uh, neighbours and, and family, um, right back to negotiating with one of our Prime Ministers, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. She has served on all sorts of boards and commissions. She has been an international ambassador uh, for Canada, um, and she has just been an incredible representative uh, for our First Nations as well as for Canada as a whole. And then just recently, uh, there was the election of Rosanna uh, Roseanne Archibald to be the very first female chief of the Assembly of First Nations. And what a triumph that is to have a woman, an Indigenous woman, running such an important organization that gives voice uh, to all of our Indigenous neighbors here in Canada and represents them as nations uh, in, in conjunction uh, with our government of Canada. Of course, at High Voltage Leadership, that's what I do every day, is work with incredible, strong female leaders to help them embrace their passion, their why, what makes them great as a leader, and build a leadership brand so that they can confidently and securely step in um, to being forward and, and um, you know, it, it confident and really embrace uh, their uh, own leadership brand and style and it makes me so proud to see that we have some of our incredible female indigenous leaders stepping forward into such prominent roles really starting uh, to shatter that glass ceiling um, and they are going to be so influential not only in reconciliation with our First Nations here in Canada but also in how Canada continues to grow how women see themselves in leadership roles um, and that makes me so happy uh, as someone who coaches female leaders and if you want to know more about the work that I do at High Voltage Leadership, please visit me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or of course at highvoltageleadership.ca.